let's not wait for that. Let's have a perspective from Anand Swami, Director of Education, Microsoft India. Over to you, Anand. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Shavik. Uh, thank you. Um, um, at the outset, I want to thank you, Shavik and APAC News Network for providing the opportunity to Microsoft. Um, really, really appreciate this uh, kind of forum at a point in time when we don't have, uh, you know, open forums to discuss ideas or broad-based things. I think this uh, comes across as a very good initiative done by APAC News Network and your team to bring us all uh, in the center forward. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Kalsi. I think that was some very amazing and quick insights that you brought in at the start, Shavik. And uh, uh, Venkat to share his ideas from Dell on AI. Uh, if we look back on what Dr. Kalsi said, I think there are a few areas that I would also cover uh, in my conversation, which is related to skilling, cloud adoption, industry 4.0, and what exactly we are doing. AI obviously becomes a very important and pertinent point when we speak about industry 4.0. So these are all uh, critical areas that I think uh, critical speaker spoke uh, just before me. Uh, in addition to this, I just want to call out and thank and offer my heartfelt gratitude if in case we have the educators and teachers also listening into the session. Uh, uh, thank them because they are working tirelessly to uh, ensure that the learning never stops. So thanks to them and multiple educators, universities, chancellors, etc. for adoption of technology and ensuring that uh, you know the learning never stops. I'm here today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to share the uh, technology perspective on digital campuses for hybrid learning. Um, I would speak about what elements it would take, what trends uh, currently uh, is it that we are focusing, and where is it that Microsoft can partner with the solutions with most of the universities, institutions, and um, things as such. I have uh, Winnie with me, uh, who heads our uh, scaling and learning initiatives for Microsoft. Uh, she'll be the one who will be orchestrating uh, the slides here. Vinny, can you just bring up the slides? I think while she brings up the slide, I think uh, just wanted to share this part also that, you know, last year and a half has not been that easy. The last 18 months, I think, have completely changed the concept of a classroom and how we teach, um, how technology is the only ally which we have in our times of change. Collaboration platform that Microsoft had, say, for example, like Teams, uh, empowered millions across the country to continue learning uninterrupted. This was a time that was never seen. This was a time where most of the educator institutes, uh, uh, organizations thought of revamping on the digital side. Uh, Dr. Kalsi earlier referred to the industry 4.0, where a critical element is uh, cloud. Uh, this was one such time where we moved towards the next possible uh, generation of adoption of cloud, creating new infrastructures, creating new ideas, and generating new thought processes, etc. If you look at today, uh, um, um, Vinny, you can move on to the next slide. Every institution, if you look at it, is a tech institution. The way we have adopted and used technology and the way we are going to adopt and use technology will define who we are, what we are capable of, and the progress that we can drive. This in Microsoft we call as tech intensity. And increasingly tech intensity will, uh, will be a critical determinant of success in the digital world. The adoption of robotics, the adoption of AR, VR, AI, uh, which was just spoken in the uh, previous session, these are all critical part of the fourth industrial revolution. Now, if you think about it, most of the educational institutes are already in there. They have already adopted the key or core technologies which are called out in the fourth industrial revolution already. So you would figure out that in higher education, most of the institutes have already gone two steps ahead on robotics, on adoption of AR, VR, and artificial intelligence, which is making the uh, life of a student or a teacher's life more conducive, more productive. We are already seeing that this massive innovation on digital transformation and technology is driving in education. And it makes us immensely hopeful that you know, the future will be more bright and much more uh, amazing. Uh, we can move on to the next one, third one. Yeah, just stay there. As I look ahead, I think uh, I would like to call uh, three key trends which have accelerated due to the pandemic and they're likely to continue to shape and transform the future of education in the country. The first and foremost thing that I want to call out is the data and AI innovation in the cloud. Data and AI are enabling schools and teachers around the world 
to do more than ever before from personalized learning to using data and analytics for decision making to intelligent systems that are transforming how learners find and interact with the information the opportunities to improve education outcomes and the accessibility with ai will be truly transformational the second trend line that i see today is the emergence of complementary platforms for learning and skilling dr kalsi did mention that you know skilling will become extremely critical skilling is going to be an integral part of ensuring that the future generation is on uh, uh, technology and uh, on areas which can give uh, jobs and which can give them secure jobs in the future there are technology areas which ensures that you know these kind of courses are at self paced they are delivered through multiple form factors and anytime anywhere so if you look at it content and device then becomes extremely critical when we try and look at this trend line again finally the third trend line that i see here is building more trust in technology trust plays a very key role when we embrace technology platforms all stakeholders care deeply about privacy and the privacy needs to be central in designing tech platforms and unique capabilities for education microsoft believes that privacy is a fundamental right so there is a need for an end to end cybersecurity approach to protect institutions businesses customers ecosystem in a very important way digital safety i can tell you that we can no longer think about online safety as secondary to offline safety it becomes extremely important for us and hence i said that this is a third critical important element that has to be called out that when we reform our ideas when we redo the entire organizations and steps security and privacy should be the topmost priority for most of the organizations move on to the next slide vinny now many of us know that post pandemic most of the education systems around the world they realize that they are dangerously outdated on it and that is where technology provides a critical outcome so what exactly is the core theme that is required to run or to you know do things in the education system in my opinion the education should be education system should be recalibrating redesigning existing systems to a holistic and single integrated system which provides transformative outcomes uh the the next slide we can move on here is a very quick preview of microsoft's thought on education transformation framework it provides a single cohesive view of student success modernizing teaching and learning empowering research and building and to ensure that you know we build a secure and connected campus this slide lists some of the most amazing microsoft solution components which impact the four areas of framework move on to the next one please these are solutions which you can learn understand about where we critically call out how we would help when we talk about the four areas of the framework that was spoken in the previous slide all these products and solutions are available for all these are all products that would make a student more productive in organization more engaged more cohesive moving on to the next one i want to call out the recent work that we have done in the past 18 month which amplifies the areas where microsoft has really worked in depth the biggest one right now when we spoke uh, when we spoke about you know areas of interest areas of work etc dr kalsi spoke about skilling i really want to call out the great initiative that uh, we uh, launched along with uh, the government of andhra pradesh in andhra pradesh microsoft proposed an end to end holistic scalable skilling solution starting with learning content and curriculum trainings experiential learning through azure labs exercises certifications up to preparing them for employment opportunities through linkedin courses highly customizable and these are all as per the requirements of government of andhra pradesh this like brings across 162000 odd end users or students etc would be certified would move on to the next level there is some amazing work that we have done in gujarat in terms of adoption on teams where we collaborated during the pandemic lockdown time to ensure that you know collaboration happens the maximum the students the teachers were able to engage in a much deeper fashion and deeper way there is a platform which we call as diksha which again becomes a single platform where microsoft has supported the government in building this as a cohesive network there are areas where we in k to 12 worked along with cbse cict to build curriculums for the future these are just some quick wins that we recently had an amazing work that was done between microsoft nodal agencies and state governments to ensure that you know we are in motion 
and the pandemic doesn't put any kind of blocker in the work that we're doing. Now, moving into the next slide, Vinny, let's take a moment uh, to examine what an agile, holistic, and interoperable technology ecosystem would look like. You would call out that one unified platform for application, for learning tools, which lights up education activities, including collaboration, communication, content creation, creative and critical thinking exercises. Teams does that to a very large extent. Multiple collaboration platform tools, which have uh, been found in usage in by multiple organizations today. But for Microsoft, Teams takes the epitome of all these engagements that I just spoke about. Within this platform, Teams serves as a consistent touch point where students can access the learning materials, uh, they can access the classmates, instructors, institutions, all from one centralized location. The face of learning device, regardless of the make, model, operating system, is Microsoft Teams. It can be one single item that we can build, and on top of it, you can put teaching, learning, assessments, classrooms, and other sessions. There are innovative devices with accessibility for all. That's another bit that we call out that an accessibility should be available to all. As highlighted earlier, we provided many devices for education that come with built-in accessibility tools. These devices cover a broad spectrum to fit your school's budget, to a university's budget, to an institute's budget. And it can have a planned curriculum address overall needs, whether these devices can be primarily used by students or it can be for teachers. Finally, the most important thing that I want to call out here is the foundation of this experience to connect your institution to the ecosystem is through leveraging your existing learning management system, is through leveraging the existing ERP, core CRM, or the student lifecycle management system. From where data can be managed, from where an authoritative user can utilize the database to seamlessly create digital identities. Azure Active Directory, which is a product from Microsoft, can sync with the school data and build such intelligent ideas and platforms for you to gain more insights, more ideas from a start of the admission to the end of a student moving out of that campus or institute. It can be a holistic SLCM kind of feature that can be built in. Our foundational services serve as a core program that keep the ecosystem organized, secure, super secure, and easily managed. These applications make sure that you know, everyone in the ecosystem has identity while protecting privacy, keeps out unwanted bad actors, activates email and storage accounts, allows the devices to be managed in a perfect way. Let's move on to the next slide, Vinny. This slide essentially encapsulates uh, very interesting shift. I think past 18 odd months to 24 months, the idea is super clear that this indicates a shift from only content to device being at the center. Device becomes the most important tool today to enable hybrid learning. And it's now the foundation of a successful student and teacher relationship in hybrid learning. Hybrid learning, we all are aware, is going to be the future. And the more we speak to people, more we speak to insti institutions and members, we understand that you know there is a need for an easy to manage, secure technology that empowers teachers and students to achieve more. The shift from shared use, primarily classroom-based technology, has given way to one-to-one -one device access across the world, and the learner has come to the center stage. You can learn anywhere from a single device. Just to let you know, Microsoft has launched a specific student edition device right now in the US would come back to India also, which specifies and focuses only on the student bit and student learning and initiatives. In the interest of time, I would not cover the next four critical ones. The next four slides are slides which talk about how Microsoft is positioned to address all the needs of a customer, which is before uh, a particular session, in and after a particular classroom session, what all are the areas, which are the Microsoft products that you can utilize, and we can move on to the probable next possible slide. All these products of Microsoft clearly indicate how we can build a modern classroom. What is it that is required if in case you need to set up a quick uh, lab, which is like off bounds during the pandemic time, but how is it that I can set up an agile virtual lab? If you won't believe, uh, this actually needs only four steps to create an Azure virtual labs. 
the minute your setup is ready you reach out to a microsoft individual or a personality by saying that you know i need a help i need to set up a virtual lab <coughs> sorry a virtual you know uh, uh, input out of output kind of a scenario where we need to carry out experiments and understanding or we need to have remote connectivity or we need to run certain classrooms all these are very much achievable with the kind of technology and the power that technology brings on to the table today we can move on to the next uh, probable uh, uh, last or important slide where i want to pause that's on um, that's on privacy um yeah this is important i want to reiterate this because this becomes very important i really want to take a pause and call out again the same aspect that i called out earlier that privacy is a fundamental right and it is dedicated to help you all create a safe and engaging learning environment microsoft always believes in these privacy standards and ensures that you know it is very important for the continuous compliance for your institution we believe in six critical privacy principles and we use these all the time to shape the way how we build our products and engage with the end users i think I, I would just, uh, Shavik, if you're okay, uh, should I move uh, on to the end of it? I just see the minister coming in. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, you can finish in a minute or so. We are yeah. joined by Sweetin Mittal. He'll be the next Super. speaker. Yeah. Wonderful. Finally, I think as we look ahead, the jobs of the future will be digital. Skilling in next generation technologies like cloud computing, AI, IoT, all of these will be critical to empower both students and teachers to succeed in a digital economy. We have a huge opportunity to make India the tech talent hub of the world. And each one of us or you as educators have such a critical role to play in that industry. We all have tremendous opportunity in the digital skilling, first as learners ourselves and then as educators. I'm really excited about what the future holds for us and we look forward to partnering with every member in the education ecosystem uh, on this journey to make this learning more fun, more inspiring and more accessible for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anand Swami, Director of Education of Microsoft India, and Dr. Vinnie Jory for joining us in the inaugural of the third edition of APEC Global and Education Skill Conclave. If I take a crux of what uh, Mr. Anand has said, that uh, uh, in that part, you've said that data-informed decision-making is one of the latest trends in the higher education and how Microsoft is uh, making a mark in that. You also talked about the unified experience integration of various aspects together and uh, but at the beginning you said one thing which i like most that how we use technology is going to define us in the future that that is very important and also you talked about the uh cloud lab and the the unified experience what microsoft uh, solutions are providing to students i am sure that educators who are present in this platform from today tomorrow and the after will be uh interested to interact with uh organization like yours. I'm sure about that.